Today we're going to talk about an alternative to PowerPoint called Prezi. Now Prezi is a great presentation tool that engages an audience better than anything I've ever used. Better yet, it's easy to learn. And the best thing about Prezi is that you can store all your presentations on the Prezi.com site. This way you can show your presentations anywhere you travel without having to worry about bringing your laptop. Prezi offers a handful of great tutorials, but even if you only watch the first one in the series, you'll know enough to do your best ever presentation. The purpose of this video isn't to reinvent the wheel, but simply to make a few suggestions that I feel Prezi should have mentioned. So here we go. Tip number one, design your images with like shapes and sizes whenever possible. I created a template in Photoshop that's 2x2 two two inches and 150 pixels per inch. I simply drop my photos into this template and save them as PNG files. By saving them as PNG files, I can create circular images that are eye-catching, and I don't have to worry about the nasty square background that looks amateurish. Now, if you don't have any Photoshop experience, I strongly suggest taking an online Photoshop class like lynda.com. But if you're short on time, just ask a colleague to teach you this one simple task in Photoshop. All right, so here's the next tip. Once you're in Prezi, zoom all the way out and build an eye-catching design. For example, a big circle that resembles a clock. Order your images such that the first thing the audience sees is the image at high noon, the second image is at 1 o'clock, the third at 2 o'clock, and so on. When you order your images this way, you prevent your audience from getting motion sickness. Now, here's another idea. If I'm doing a presentation on the story of my life and my name is Jeff, I may zoom all the way out and create a big letter J. It may seem trivial, but organizing our images this way is just one more way we can engage our audience. Tip number three. Consider adding some background music. As of 2011, this requires creating a short movie complete with a graphic. So I downloaded a horn-like image, and then I added a 30-second catchy tune. I exported it as a QuickTime movie, and then converted it to a flash file. Right now, flash files are the only acceptable way to do audio in Prezi, but that's likely to change in the near future. All right, one more tip. The Prezi.com site has some great examples from their customers. After you have a few days of practice under your belt, check out what other people are doing. Okay, now let's watch the basic Prezi tutorial. I hope you have as much fun with this as I've had. This is a step-by-step -step introduction to show you how to use basic tools in Prezi. When you complete this tutorial, check out the next video on how to make an effective Prezi using grouping and layering. Let's start. Sign into your Prezi account here and click Create a new Prezi to go to the Prezi canvas. The first thing we'll do is to add text. As it gives you instructions here, double click anywhere to add an idea. Double click on the canvas to get this text box. Now I can add text. I'll do it again. Click OK. If you have changed your mind, click once and you get the transformation zebra. This zebra allows you to do different things to your text. When you click once and you get the zebra, you can hit delete to delete the text. If you change your mind, you can go in the upper corner and click undo. Again, click once to get the zebra. Once you have the zebra, you can hold the middle of the zebra and drag your text where you want it to go. So I actually want to delete this text. So I say delete. Now I click again once here and I drag to move the text. I can also use the outer ring, hold it and turn to move the text. I can hold the inner ring, push in to make it smaller or push out to make the text bigger. So the zebra allows you to manipulate your text. There's also a plus sign on the zebra. When you click it, you get extra options on what you can do. I will let you explore these options on your own. Now that you know the zebra, let's look at other things in the upper right corner. I've showed you how to do undo. You can also click save at any time to save your Prezi. To exit the Prezi, click exit in the upper right corner and it will take you back to your Prezi's page. Next, let's add an image. 
This, in the upper left corner, is the Prezi bubble menu. It is the key to all the functions in editing your Prezi. To add an image, click Insert and Load File. It takes you to all your files and folders. You can click on Desktop and select an image and select Open. Now it uploads the image to my Prezi canvas. I can click once, just like I did on text, and move the image. Or I can click on the inner ring and push in to make the image smaller. I can click on the outer ring to rotate the image. Now let's add video. In Prezi, you can easily add YouTube videos with just a few clicks. I can go to YouTube and select a video on tying my shoes. Select the URL of the video, copy it, come back to my Prezi and double click to open a text box. I paste in the YouTube URL in the text box and click OK. Now my video appears. Just like I did with text and images, I can click once to get the zebra. Now I can move the video where I want it to be, I can also make it smaller. Now that you have several objects in your Prezi, let's connect these items by adding a path. In the bubble menu, you see path. The path helps you have a main narrative in your Prezi. With the path tool, you can go through your presentation by clicking the next arrow or using the arrow keys on your keyboard because a path is the order in which the elements appear in your Prezi. So let's click add a path. Now you can select the order in which you want the objects to appear in your Prezi. Since this is the title, I would like it to be first. Then I can show the image, select the text again, and maybe make the last thing the video. If I've changed my mind, I can remove something from the path by holding the bubble and dragging it outside of the Prezi. Now you see that my Prezi has renumbered and this object is no longer in the path. But if I change my mind again, and I want to make this back in the path, I can grab this bubble in between the two items where I want to add it and wait until the object highlights and release. Now it has been added back to my path. You can practice this to get the hang of it. Once you have a path in your Prezi, you're ready to present. Go back to the bubble menu and click the middle and now you can click Show. Show mode is your presentation mode. I can scroll my mouse back over to get the menu and go back to the editing mode by clicking the right bubble or the middle menu. Again, I can click show. I can also toggle back and forth between these modes by clicking the space bar. In show mode, I can use these keys or the arrow keys on my keyboard to go through my presentation. The first thing I do is hold the back button down until I get this U-turn symbol. This takes me to the first element in my Prezi. Now I can click Next and go through the different elements of the Prezi. Your YouTube video will automatically start playing once it appears in the Prezi path. Once you have presented your Prezi, you can use the Zoom In and Zoom Out buttons to address audience questions. You can also click on an object to zoom into it. You can use your mouse to pan across the canvas and you can always click on something to highlight it. When you're done presenting, you can scroll back to the menu and then click exit to go back to the Your Prezi page. Hopefully, this step-by-step -step tutorial helps you create a Prezi using the basic tools. For tips on making an effective Prezi, check out the next tutorial on grouping and layering. Need additional help? Check out the Prezi manual at prezi.com learn.